from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of IBM Think 2021. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to IBM Think 2021. This is theCUBE's continuous virtual in-depth coverage of the people, processes, and technologies that are changing our world. Right now we're going to talk about modernization and the synergy with cloud. And we're pleased to welcome Doug Armbrust, who's the VP of GTS Cloud Synergy. Hey Doug, how you doing? Great Dave, I'm excited to be on theCUBE. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Hey, let's talk a little bit of tech. What, what are some of the technologies that your clients are, are applying on their path to modernization? Sure, you know, one, um, give you three examples and see, three that we're seeing a lot of interest in from a services standpoint. Um, one is automation. You know, automation is a, an area that it's been a focus for, you know, several decades, but you know, we're seeing a, a, a renewed excitement around the opportunity for you know, automated operations and the, the, you know, Really, I'll talk about two other technologies, but the extension of automation into some of the the newer cloud technology. So that's one. Um, two is 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 cloud. You know, cloud has been a term in industry for a while now, and folks have been at various points of a journey to cloud centric uh, models and technologies. Um, we're seeing a, an even accelerated transition to not just public cloud, but also private cloud technologies, and in particular, a need to interconnect those with one another and with uh, traditional environments. And then the, you know, the, the last one, and I, I think there's been a bit of a referendum on the technology over the last year is around con containers, um, specifically Kubernetes as a standard for that space. You see really a, um, a cementing of direction around containers um, clearly people are at different stages of implementation and experimentation with the technology, but I, I do see a referendum on this being a fundamental part of future technology and direction. So, okay, so automation, cloud and containers. I'm going to ask you a follow up on containers because, you know, it's clear that when you look at all the data, it's, it's off the charts in terms of, of adoption. And ultimately our scenario is, okay, it gets subsumed into the stack, but where, where do customers ultimately want to go? I mean, obviously they're, they're upskilling, but, but what's the outcome that they're trying to achieve? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. I, I think a you know, general question we have to ask of modernization, right? Is it, um, you know, I, I like modern things. I, I, you know, would like to live in a uh, modern house. My, my wife likes a farmhouse. So guess, guess where we live? <laughs> we live in a farmhouse with, um, you know, modernized appliances and, and infrastructure. Yeah, new car yeah, smell, we love what, it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ultimately what enterprises, they're working back from an objective and, and that objective, you know, the, we've had this term digital transformation for about a decade. And, and, you know, underneath that umbrella, it's about being able to move and respond quickly. It's about being able to create innovation and accelerate innovation. And, and I think probably most important is deliver on a customer experience, an end customer experience. You know, 10 years ago, what I expected when I went to a restaurant was, uh, uh, you know, if I could look them up on the internet and find their location, use my GPS to get there, I was, I was good to go. Um, you know, you're, you know, a year ago, I, I'm looking for, you know, to use an app, them to remember my favorite place to sit. Um, you know, very different expectations. Um, and that pressure on enterprise to meet those end, ex, uh, end expectations is really at the heart of, you know, the modernization. And, and part of that's infrastructure modernization. Containers is interesting because it brings together, you know, not just infrastructure, it brings together how application development cycles are being implemented. It, it has implications for security that, um, you know, can be positive if, if done right. So, yeah, we, we do see that as um, a key area to meet the end, end business objectives. It's going to take some time. Um, IDC, I think is the most bullish. They, they talk about 80% of workloads by 2023 will shift to containers. I, I believe that for newly created workloads, I think developers have got this in their hands and they understand the 
efficiencies for their own work as well as when this moves to production this sort of DevSecOps model is um, it is you know kind of comes with containers if if done right um, you know that there's a legacy that's that's going to be a long, around a long time and so you know helping customers you know, understand those operating models and how to to live with them both is going to be important over the next uh, you know five to ten years yeah I, I, you know you're talking about those those drivers responsiveness the innovation etc I live in an old house too and there's another component here which is you know that 80 percent reasonable people could discuss that because there's a risk component right I can modernize my house but I can jack up one end of the house but it might mess up something that I just did uh, and so CIOs obviously are risk averse they want to modernize but at the same time they want to get from point A to point B without you know, with minimum disruption um, so to that end I wonder if you could talk about what you saw during the pandemic I mean we're still in the pandemic but you had a reduction in budgets in, in, in virtually yeah. across the board, you know, minus four, minus 5% in spending, had a shift toward work from home, whatever, VDI, laptops, you know, it was a, a rush, endpoint security, that whole thing. A lot of organizations right. tried to do both. They said, hey, we're actually going to double down on digital transformation. We see this as a, a lean in opportunity. We got liquidity. What, what, how did COVID influence modernization initiatives in your client base? Yeah, it, you know, it impacted different um, different clients in different ways. Um, some, as you mentioned, you know, I almost view it as very Darwinian in the sense that those who had modernized and had capabilities, you know, more deeply automated, were ready for the transition that they had to go through. So they were able to quickly shift to work from home. They were able to deliver on new client experiences. You know, the analogy before on digital transformation, those pressures never went away, but COVID just brought new ones. And they expected all of those things, but now they expected, you know, the restaurant, they expect the restaurant to bring that food to my door um, and do it in a safe manner. So that, you know, the, the challenges it brought on organizations were um, in many cases new some who were in a good position could accelerate work in place and leverage that. Um, others had a harder time, right? It, um, those who couldn't translate technology to immediate returns to kind of fuel that ongoing progress have, have made that, had to make some hard decisions. And I would say that's probably the single trend is you know, projects are very carefully reviewed there's that view of, you know, will this help me now and into the future? Mm -hmm. That's always present, but it's present in a um, stronger manner than we, we've seen it for some time. In that en envelope, um, I kind of come back to within those three technologies, uh, automation has certainly we've seen a jump it, because of its nature. Um, what we see in automation projects is a, a faster time to implement and achieve some of the agility and flexibility that you know cloud provides, um, but can take a longer time frame if you haven't you know, gotten far along in your cloud journey. Containers even longer time frame. So a lot of folks are are you know, looking at automation projects as um, particularly those that weren't as well positioned for sort of a quick turn, and then taking that automation work and extending it into cloud and containers and you know as as those initiatives progress. I mean, there are definitely some historical parallels. I mean, I could even go back to Y2K and look at all the application rationalization mm -hmm. exercises that were going on back then. The technologies were different. You know, you didn't have, you know, the, 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 the modern cloud. You, you, you know, containers have been around forever, but not in the form of Kubernetes. And, and right. automation, the automation was scary, you know, back then, but, but nonetheless, people were trying to, you know, use scripts or, you know, whatever they could do. But now is almost like an automation mandate. If you weren't a digital business, you were out of business. So what are the what are some of the learnings uh, that you've seen from these modernization journeys that you're taking customers on that you might, you might be able yeah, to share? Well, yeah, you know, let me let me comment on automation first, and then I'll sure. maybe say it more generally. You know, I, I think automation. You're right. Um, it, it, we're not finding enterprises that are doing things manually. Everybody's gotten at least to kind of that scripting point, and then we see 
you know, that has its own journey. Then there's, you know, centralization, then folks trusting the automation to enable self-service. That That's sort of a kind of a tipping point to who is ready for COVID and, and who wasn't. You know, those who had hardened their automation to enable self-service generally could then call on that self-service to meet the new demands that they were facing. You know, the, the, the next stage, and we see less folks there, um, we get into sort of infrastructure as code. Um, yep. um, we, we, we talk about areas of intelligence in your automation. You know, when you, you talk about trust, you know, it, it's it not as many have progressed to where they trust their automation to, you know, proactively, maybe sometimes reactively respond to a situation or set of, you know, you have to be very integrated at that point and you have to really believe in your automation. And then you, you then talk about integrating AI um, to sense, respond, make decisions and bring those back into your, your automation technologies. I'd say that's, that's still very future, but, but folks are very intrigued by that. Now, now, you know, your, your more general question, what, what's sort of some of the learnings? Um, and it really goes back to, you know, modernization needs to have a business goal. Um, and that's, you know, that's become, you know, maybe more clear than it was uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, in the absence of that, um, you know, IT projects have always had some degree of failure. It's just the evidence of that failure is probably a little bit more poignant. Um, you know, and related to that is there needs to be a strategic plan. And in particular with modernization, it's easy to get caught up with the modern side. And Dave, you were kind of alluded to this before. If you're not thinking about the old, the the connection to the legacy, um, that's that's a very common kind of failure signature. Mm -hmm. It's a marching ahead with the modernization with, without a strategic plan to connect those things and an ability to kind of tackle a piece at a time. You know, so sometimes budgets go away and, and, you know, that's a problem. So, you know, each step in the journey, this is really the third lesson, needs to have incremental value. It needs to kind of pay back something to help fund the next stage of modernization. And I'd say the last one, and it's self-serving for us as a services company, it's, it's helpful to have a partner on these journeys. You know, we, you know, in, in my particular area of focus, you know, in a year and a half, we've had 600, you know, six, 1,600 engagements. A lot of those engagements are people coming to us after making what they now view as mistakes. Um, you know, some of the area, three areas I just mentioned and being able to bring somebody in with experience with maybe some complementary skills that can partner um, with an enterprise uh, it can be very helpful to, uh, you know, to to avoid some of the pitfalls. Yeah, the, I think you know your your point is right on. I mean, I, I've seen horror stories where people, I mean, literally said, "We're going to go off the mainframe." They got they got decades old COBOL code that's working just fine, and then and, and they literally risked their business trying to brute force migrate off, and they never could. They're not going to freeze the code. I mean, it's just horror stories. But today's different. You can actually build an abstraction layer, leverage cloud services and, and Kubernetes and the like, and build, use microservices to actually connect the old to the new. And that's the hardest part. Again, old house analogies. I, I've right. done a lot of connecting the old to the new. That's the hardest part. You got to be really careful. But today the technologies are enabling to, to do that. And one of them is obviously things like, like OpenShift I mean, the, the right. definition of open, again, a little history here. It used to be Unix was open and then, you know, then Windows and then, you know, <laughs> Linux, the LAMP stack. But, but really, you know, that, that piece of your portfolio is, is a critical part to, to, to enable these types of moves. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, it, it's exciting that technologies are, are there and, and there's a path forward. And it's great to, you know, it's work, great to work with a partner who's maybe you know, done that 10 or 15 times or, you know, or more and, and you know, have them help, help guide you on that path. But, but the good news is there is, you know, enabling technologies to transform in a number of ways, depending on, you know, what the business objectives are for an enterprise. Yeah, cool. All right, Doug, we got to go. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It's great to see you. Okay, same Dave, All appreciate right. it. Keep it right there, everybody. This is Dave Vellante. You're watching IBM Think 2021, the virtual edition covered on theCUBE.